Hello everybody, I am Shuffles. Welcome to Let's Play Penumbra Overture. So this is the first of the trilogy of episodes for the Penumbra series. And it's also the game that was made before Amnesia Dark Descent. It was indeed made by Frictional Games. And I've played the first episode before and I've I'm pretty sure I played a little bit into the second one as well, but I never actually finished the second episode or the third one. So, we're going to get straight stuck into it. I'm... I don't really like this whole idea of easy, medium, hard when it comes to this kind of game, but I'm going to go with hard anyway. My story began in February year 2000. For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it, so when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I've ever heard from him. But he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went as he knew I would. I discovered that despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago, and so the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever take. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realised my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day, and I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12-hour journey that would lead me into my past. Okay. Um, I don't know the whole story with with this game. Finally, we're almost docked. I better stow my gear. I may be far from home, but chances are I can still pick things up using left mouse. I can take a closer look at using the right mouse. Yes. Always good to have a notebook to jot down interesting information and reminders. I think I left my torch and yeah, yeah. Sorry, I skipped that. Um, but yes, I have played through the entire first episode. I don't know the entire story, but I'm sure we'll find out. Dearest Eric, just a quick note before you set sail and leave me once again. I've left you a little something to remember me by in the chest at the foot of your bed. I really don't know why you still only have one bed on board. Taking shifts because of it is no way to get your rest. But what does a fisherman's wife know of life at sea? I'll be praying every night for you to make the catch you need so that you can come home to me safely and soon. Please don't be gone for five weeks like last time. I know I might nag sometimes, but I do love you, you know. I've washed these, those overalls of yours. I know you'll get them covered in assorted fish parts in no time. But I still feel better knowing they've had a wash. Before I forget, the Henriksons in the village have asked me to see if you'll ha be coming by any trout, but I said they were mostly out of season. If you do happen upon any, don't say anything. Stow them well in the ice and I'll do something special with them to celebrate when you come home to me. The ship's captain deserves a little special treatment once in a while. Take care, my love. Alright. I'm certain this map's a good decade or so out of date, but landmarks don't change much in Greenland, so I've got a pretty decent idea of where I'm heading. To your doom. 
flashlight switches on and off via the tab or an inventory or hopefully with the shortcut F yeah, we know all this, we know all this and I have a key here which opens that could come in handy if the torch runs out of batteries I should be able to access it through my inventory or through shortcut G and uh, some extra batteries from the power of my flashlight I can't quite remember what else to do. I think that might be it. As I stepped off the boat setting out into the blizzard that had formed around me, I realised how utterly devoted I had been to the discovery of my father's past. I had no idea what to expect. Soon enough my concerns were justified. I don't know whether I lost my origination, orientation or my spirit first. But I lost feeling in my extremities soon after a new hypothermia was setting in. I started looking for shelter. So cold, don't know where I am. Need shelter soon. Okay. My entire head went numb a long time ago, but I can still hear wind roaring past. Or some kind of animal. If I click and hold it... Oh yeah, this is just inventory. Exactly what I'm doing. Because we need to break the ice on this. I remember this well. There we go. Come on. Come on. Work with me, you damn thing. I used a rock on it. Oh, come on. What? Ah. There we go. Uh. Uh oh. Oof. Why is it with frictional games that we always fall into pits and hurt ourselves? There we go. We always fall into dark holes. Jesus, my head. I can't believe I fell that far and survived. Although, looking around, maybe I didn't. What is this place? Can I slow down the... Uh... Sorry, one second. Uh... Personal notes, graphics... Advanced... Mm -mm 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 no, it doesn't look like it. Because it can go quite quickly. I'm not the... I am not the fastest reader ever. I'll be honest. A steel rod. Okay. What does it say? Emergency exit procedures. Well, that's all gone out the window. Empty boxes of ammunition. What is this place? Yes, when you start seeing empty boxes of ammunition, you should start worrying. Hammer. Let's see, I can swing this hammer if I could hold left mouse. I can make a back swing by pulling the right mouse and then follow through by pushing left. The opposite works too, pulling back and then thrusting forward proceeds to stabbing motion. I reckon if I hold down or after a back swing, I should be able to look around, right? Okay. Yeah, this, this is one of the sucky parts about this penumbra. Uh... There are kind of combat elements uh, to it, which uh, doesn't work very well. It's the only kind of, it's the only quarrel I really have with Penumbra is that horrible, 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 horrible fucking idea of a combat system. Right, this brings me back here. Um, like there, there is one part that you're almost, you're technically forced to fight, um, or at least I found it to be like that, and uh, it was rather a pain in the behind, um, which we'll be, we'll be coming across it sooner or later anyway. There we go. That should open that. 
Whatever I was descending into was a hundred feet below ground, protected by two solid metal hatches located in a remote arctic wilderness and buried beneath the snow. I didn't know what to expect, but it made me feel something I hadn't felt since I was a child. I'd never given it much thought before, but I realized that our entire society is a network of safety nets. Emergency services at the end of a phone line, health and safety in a workplace, friends, family, lovers, all there if something goes wrong. Part of a carefully designed structure to prevent all but the most mundane of emotions. Once again, I felt like I did when I was in school, surrounded by a closing ring of older kids, knowing anyone that might help me. Friends, partners, sorry, friends, parents, teachers were too scared or too far away. I jotted down a note just in case. The entrance to the cave is caved in, there must be another way out. There could be anything living down here. Heroics are for Hollywood actors and fairy tales. I'm not taking any chances. If I face off against anything down here, I won't last a second. Caution and stealth are my only defenses now. If anyone or anything hears me, I'd be best off staying low and out of sight until I know whether or not it's a threat. Crouching by pressing left control will give me the chance to hide in the shadows. I know I've got it right because of the blue tints of my vision. Plus, I have should be quiet enough that I won't be heard unless something's right on top of me. Better remember to shut off any light sources though. Okay. My best bet is to hide for a couple of seconds or so, perfectly still. That'll make me properly hidden. This place must be old if they're still using paraffin lamps. Looks like there's still some juice left. Like that, I'll be virtually invisible, and for some time I should get my night vision back before I stay still. Okay, so we're here. Let's head to the office first. I do remember this pretty well. So I do. And there's certain parts in this, and I bloody hate wooden box. What's this? Oh, it's just a bottle. Which can be used for distraction. Oh my god, distraction! <laughs> but yes, I do remember this quite well. There are some parts which I was not too fond of. And there was quite a lot of backtracking in this as well, I remember. That's not a smart idea. 15th of August, 1945. Command Bunker Emergency Airstrip Zulu Weekly Report Another unremarkable week in Greenland Regular supply shipment received Standard emergency drills carried out Routine runway maintenance complete I've ordered maintenance to be carried out twice weekly from here on in Due to increased snowfall One wounded The one wounded figure is no cause for concern back in London The Germans haven't extended their front lines by 4,000 miles Two of my men were caught manufacturing cherry bombs in the workshop's armory and succeeded in blowing off a couple of fingers. Lovely. I take partial responsibility for this in that I allowed them access to the demolitions manual we keep in the storeroom, and I'm sure that's where they learnt the ingredients. As a precautionary measure, I have now locked up that manual in the chest in my office, and I'll keep the key on my person at all times. News to say both men have been disciplined and the injured man has been sent home for medical care. I cannot help but think that a more suitable punishment would have been for him to stay out here, but the matter is out of my hands. The space is so disconnected, sometimes I feel as if this war could end and we might not even hear about it out here. Supplies requisition repro order. Dynamite for excavation purposes. Seven bayonets. Not necessary in my opinion, but procedure states we should have a full complement. One industrial ice pick for removing the darn ice that forms in the external hatch. One pair of reading glasses, category 7C, an order for myself. My glasses are in rather a poor state of repair and could do with replacing. Reconditioning of the mine continues to progress. The structure is being fortified from potential bomb damage and excavation of previously caved in areas is going ahead. One point of curiosity is some kind of archaeological find, an artifact buried in the earth and discovered by one of the work teams. Later this evening, after martial duty, I shall take a closer look at the artifact. It appears to be man-made and may have working parts inside. I shall remove what looks like the front cover and see if I can't discover the source of light, which
which constantly emits from it. Chief NCO M Major. <sighs> right, after all that reading. Anything. Right, so there's a key. Copenhagen Post, Monday, 17th of August, 1930. Psychotropic deposits at the bottom of death mine? Researchers at the University of Copenhagen have suggested that a mine altering chemicals naturally sown into the rock may be the cause of high suicide rates at a Greenland mine. The university, which has recently been conducting studies into isolated communities, first became interested in workers of the northwestern lead mine last year. They discovered that even taking into account Greenland's natural higher suicide rate, local figures for the last 100 years were abnormally high, at 46 deaths per 100,000 populace compared to the national average of 29. On the further investigation, experts diagnosed in many of the minor symptoms in common with the earlier stages of paranoid schizophrenia. This has prompted researchers to hypnotize that natural deposit, hypothesize that natural deposits of lystergic acid, a pH 4 formula recently discovered to have hallucinogenic properties, may be represented in the rocks. Few locals were conducted were conductive to interview, but those who agreed to speak had their own explanation. Invite spirits known as the Turnagate live in the mountains. The university is awaiting the results of chemical testing studies continue. Yes, I forgot how much writing this game actually has in it. How much reading is actually in the game. It does have quite a bit of reading, alright. Get out of my way, chair. Uh huh. Beef jerky. Which is used to distract animals. As we will be coming across. Uh, nothing in there, looks things, nothing in there. Wait, beef jerky. I don't think I really used it that much, I just avoided enemies more than anything. Aha, painkillers. That'll do. Got flare. And the key. Ta da! Big Book of Explosives, 1923 edition. Chapter 1.3 Black Match Fuse. The Black Match Fuse is one of the oldest, simplest, and most reliable fuses used in modern pyrotechnics. It is easy to create, essentially consisting of just strings and gunpowder, but be warned the chemicals concerned will stain clothing, and as always, due to concern is advised. Materials required string, preferably cotton, black gunpowder, backstring, which we have. The string should be coated with a thin layer of backstring, which acts as an adhesive. The string is then carefully rolled into the gunpowder and left to dry at least a couple of minutes before use. Chapter 2.1 Dynamite Invented by Alfred Noble in 1866, dynamite is commonly used in construction, mining and demolition. It has been proved far safer to handle than alternatives such as pure nitroglycerin, provided that it is that is, it has been properly stored. Over time, the explosive component of dynamite is supposedly made safe by the presence of Diatomaceous earth has a tendency to weep, making an old box of explosive liable to detonate on contact. Materials required: one part diatomaceous earth, three parts nitroglycerin, a small amount of sodium carbonate. Text unreadable and then simply form into short sticks and wrap in paper. Chapter two point three: Trinitrotoluene. TNT, essentially. <laughs> TNT was first discovered in 1863 by German chemist Joseph Wilbrand, but it took some years before it yielded its true potential. This was because of the difficulty of making it explode in lesser destination in comparison to dynamite. The main advantage was discovered by the German Navy, who employed TNT's relative explosive stability in order to cause massive damage to British warships. Their torpedoes could be detonated inside a ship's armor rather than exploding on contact, as did other shells. Chapter 2.6 Armstrong's Mixture Armstrong's Mixture is included in this book as a more point of interest than as a viable chemical mix. The formula exists as somewhat of a legend in modern pyrotechnics, referenced by those knowledgeable enough to stay away from it as death mix. Its incredible velocity may make it unsuitable for all, most all potential applications. Materials required Red Phosphorus Barium this mixture can be carefully and slowly mixed to minimize risk to the chemist. Sulfur can substitute for some or all the barium to slightly decrease sensitivity. Hey, <sighs> Right. And this is a save point. A man, an old man, clutching something unseen. He 
He is strange, and yet he is no stranger. Never seen before, still I know this man before me is Howard. I call him father. Ugh, what the hell? What just happened? I don't know if that was such a good idea. And I am going to leave it here for this part, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you, and have fun.